So. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. For those of you that are new, I'm Chelsea. I'm a second year undergrad at the University of York and I'm studying law. So I know that university accommodation for some universities has now opened, but I also know that it's so stressful sometimes trying to figure out what room type you want, the location, whether to be an ensuite or a shared bathroom. So because I've lived in university accommodation for two years now, I thought I was in a good position to sit down and you know share some advice and tell you things to think about and consider when making your decision and hopefully this will help you make the best decision that you can. So straight off the bat the first thing to think about is do you actually want to live in university accommodation? I guess the three options that most people have are university halls or accommodation, you have private accommodation and then private renting. So to run through each option quickly, I guess living in university accommodation, really great to be that close to uni. There are so many benefits and most first year undergrads will be living in university accommodation in their first year. So it can feel a bit excluding, I think, to live off. However, for other maybe personal reasons or whatever, you might not want to do that. So I think it's important to note that you shouldn't feel obliged to live in university accommodation if you don't want to. So then the other options that you have are either private renting, so just, you know, getting a flat somewhere or a house share or whatever, and also private accommodation. So private accommodation basically is exactly the same as university accommodation but for example in York it's closer to town, it's nicer, it is a bit more expensive but equally loads of students live there as well so if you don't necessarily want to be on campus or you miss the cutoff or for whatever reason there's always the option to you know go off campus live in town and there are also benefits to that so I think that's the first decision to make to know that whether you want to be on campus or not because there are pros and cons to both. So once you've decided whether to live on campus or off campus, I think one of the really, really key things to sort of whittle down the accommodation that's left is the distance from the department. So for me doing law in my first year, I was in something like 20 hours a week and I knew that I wanted to be basically five minute walk from my bed to my lecture theatres. I wanted to just roll out of bed in the morning and be in all of my seminars. And I know that some people like to have a separation. A lot of my friends who do law also wanted to live on the other campus, which is like a 10 minute walk away, or they wanted to live further away because they wanted that work-life separation. And I think that's something really important to consider whether you will want to commute in the morning when you have a 9 a.m. and you might have gone out the night before, or whether you want just a couple of minutes walk, you know, from down the road and I think there are obviously positives and negatives to both I think it is great to have that work-life separation if you're going to go farther away and having that commute really forces you to get organized because you know that there's a certain amount of time that you need to leave before a class starts so you can get there but then at the same time that can be such a faff you know having an extra 10-20 minutes onto your day However, then when you think, okay, I'm gonna go really, really close on um, university accommodation, it can be brilliant rolling out of your bed five minutes before a lecture. Uh, not that I do that. But equally, it can make you really unorganized. Like the amount of times that I'd be in bed and I'd be like, oh, well, I've got like this amount of time, you know, I can just leave it to like the last minute all the time. I just don't really think that's healthy. I think if, if you had a commute, like for me, when I was in college, I had a half an hour commute from door to door and I loved that because, you know, once you had left the house that day, I knew that I couldn't come back in lunchtime and things like that because I didn't have time. So it forces you to be a bit more strict with what you're going to do that day, you know, or make your packed lunch in the morning, you know, have things to do at lunchtime and it structures your day better. So yeah, that's something to consider. Secondly, and honestly, probably one of the most important as well, I know I'm probably gonna say that for everything, but it's all so important, is the standard of the room. Now, I chose basically the creme de la creme, the premium ensuite accommodation, but that's only because I like my luxuries. So although in first year, I really liked having my little safe space of luxury and comfort, in hindsight, to be honest, I don't know whether it was worth it. I think that now I've seen accommodation in sort of the standard accommodation um, tier, that I kind of probably would have chose that instead. The only difference ultimately at the University of York was you got sofas in the kitchen and you got a double bed or a three quarter bed rather than a single bed. But I honestly look back and I'm like, I don't think it was worth the extra couple of grand a year for that. Then that brings me on to ensuite or shared bathroom. So most shared bathrooms, and obviously it depends on the accommodation, but most shared bathrooms will be shared between like three or four people. And I think that if you're from a household where you've got siblings or you've got quite a big family, then 
I think that'll be completely fine for you and that you won't mind. But for me, I was an only child and you know, from one parent household, I never basically shared a bathroom with anyone pretty much my whole life and I liked it that way. So I definitely was not keen on having show bathroom coming to university. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose to be an ensuite. And plus, I think it's just nice to have your own little space. You're coming back from lectures and thinking, I can have a 20 minute shower if I want. I can sit in here, do my makeup, whatever, and spend the time that you need rather than worrying of who else is gonna need to use the bathroom. And lastly, when it comes to standard and types of rooms is catered or self-catered. Now. I am self-catered, I have been for two years, and I'm an advocate for self-catering because I just think that, okay, yeah, you've got to learn to cook, but that's a life skill that's, you know, a great quality to learn throughout the university life. And also, I just prefer having the freedom of, I can cook at two in the morning if I want, and sadly, I do do that. But yeah, like, I can cook whenever I want. I'm not restricted to, like, this a meal slot time, or I can cook whatever food that I want that day. I like having that flexibility and freedom. I can just work around and make my own schedule. Whereas I think that if you're catered, it is very slotted in. And plus, so for example, at York, the accommodation um, catering services, they don't offer lunch, I don't think, and they don't do weekends. So you still have to be self-catered like half the time anyway. So I just don't really think it's worth it. However, I can imagine that it's nice, you know, if you're used to being at school, queuing up for school dinners and, you know, having people cook for you and sitting down with everyone and having that social element, it's up to personal preference, I think. But also consider that meal choices at university aren't gonna be the Ritz, so. So the thing that sort of encapsulates the things that I've discussed so far is price. And I think obviously price is one of the most important things because if you can't afford it, you can't have it. And the way that I decided um, that I was gonna be able to afford the accommodation that I chose, obviously I chose premium, so thankfully I was lucky enough to be able to afford that. But the way that I did that was I basically looked at my student loan and worked out how much I was gonna get and then factored in other costs such as you know, like my Netflix and my gym membership and my bus pass and makeup and going out and food, um, you know, all things like that, travel home, books, factored in all of that and realistically how much I'd want to spend and then looked at what was left and then, you know, you have a figure of what you can actually afford. But I also think it's important to note that I wouldn't recommend going for a really expensive accommodation if that meant that you were going to struggle or had to get a job or something. I think that it's honestly not worth it and I would much rather have more flexibility and go out more and do more things with my friends then have a nicer room and finally this sort of bit is just for universities that have a collegiate system like york so we have like eight undergrad colleges here and that honestly is probably the way that most people choose the accommodation that they want so i wanted to just talk about that because i think that it's really different to when you're just choosing um, to live in a block of halls. So when it comes to a collegiate system, I think you really need to think about, obviously the location, again, because in York, there are certain colleges that are located next to sports facilities. So they tend to be like the sporty college, or there are ones that, you know, that are right by certain departments. So then a lot of people from that department tend to live there. Um, but the main thing to consider, I think, is like the vibe and the ethos of each college. So I know that like, for example, at York, Constantine, the college that I live in, is known to be like the boring, one of Campus East so if you don't want to go out all the time and you want to have that like balance between study and going out then like that's the place people tend to go or say for example on the other campus here at York there's Derwent which is like the party college and then there's like James or whatever which is like the sports college there's Alquin which is like the boring college because it's right next to the library so yeah each one has its own ethos and vibe and I think you can find out from most college websites what the type of vibe is um, and I think that's just a thing to consider because obviously the type of people that are going to be attracted to that vibe and the type of people that you're going to have to live with for a year so it's whether you want that um, you know but equally there is going to be a wide range of people at every university you know college because it's uni like literally you get a mixed bag anywhere and finally to wrap up this video I just want to talk about a few additional things that if you're still torn about you know what a combination to choose then if you factor in these these might give you a bit more of an indication of what combination you want so to look at 
our bills included because obviously then you'll have to rejig your pricing um, looking at a TV license so whether is there one in the kitchens or you know the shared living space that you have will you have to pay a TV license on it if not will you want your own TV therefore we have to pay a TV li license on that way up kind of that sofas in the kitchens honestly in my first year I would say sofas in the kitchens were amazing because we basically had film nights all the time and it was a really really great way to like bond with my flat however in second year to be honest I don't think I've sat in a kitchen once uh to sit and watch a film just because I've got a whole new flat and you know different personalities we don't get on the same that we did in my first year I think fundamentally to decide you know whether you want sofas and things like that, the extra luxuries that might come up with an extra price. It's just to think about, you know, are you gonna sit and like sit with your flat and want to, you know, watch films all the time while you have the time? And if you didn't have sofas, how else will you bond? Like at York, it, the kitchens that don't have sofas, they have loads of sofas in the common rooms. People just tend to go there instead. So, or they just pile into somebody's room. So yeah, you just gotta like weigh that up, I think. And finally, an extra that I know that some universities do is, within the accommodation price you can get like extras um so it can either be a gym pass or like a meal card things like that that i think really alter the price of the accommodation and whether it's for you like you might get a gym pass with it but if you're never going to go to the gym it's just not worth it and you might as well go somewhere else if you're only going to that accommodation for the freebie that's involved so yeah i think that's another thing to consider too so yeah i think that sums up my video on like things to consider when choosing university accommodation i really want to make another video that's like what to expect before you move in so look out for that and i'll link it in the description when that comes out but yeah i hope you liked this video i hope it was interesting and and helped you in some way any questions as always shoot them in the comments box below i'll see you in the next video i'll see you next week bye guys mm -hmm.